this is the first year that I see these bleeding hearts here. And that is a Marguerite Daisy, which puts out a gorgeous bloom. So I'm really excited to see that coming back. Further down, you have some yarrow, first time. I think it's, I planted it last year, so this is the second year I'm coming back. Here you have the mountain mint mixed with some Egyptian onions. And I actually dug up, dug out a lot of these mountain mints and took them to my new homestead site. And they just do wonderful. One of the reasons why I like this plant, it produces a really wonderful bloom that bees and wasps really like. But it doesn't spread that aggressively like some of the other mints that just want to take over the garden. Mountain mint clumps and it spreads, but it does it very gently. And I think for me that's an advantage because I don't have to worry about management so much. And you get all the really good benefits of having a mint. Very delicious mint. Here you have the comfrey, which is a famous permaculture plant. Dynamic accumulator. I plant it everywhere. One thing about comfrey is once you plant it, it's going to be there probably for the rest of your life. So be careful where you put it. Very, very, it doesn't spread, but once you break a root, that turns into a new plant. So if you disturb the roots at all, you're going to get a lot of new plants. And here is blooming. It's one of the earlier plants to bloom in the garden, and that's really good for the bees. This really is my first year seeing this plant in the garden. It's uh, wild mustard. I believe it's also a spreader. But I'm really excited to see it here. It's a biennial. So essentially it will put out seeds this year that will germinate next year, but it won't bloom until the year after. But you can see already a lot of insects, a lot of bees are taking advantage of these. Very nice, quite, quite a nice bloom. So definitely a plant for the hedges. I it, it will produce a lot of seeds, so have to be careful about the spreading habit. But um, definitely a great addition to the garden. I mean, it blooms even before the daisies, which is really nice because I'm used to having the daisies to be my early bloomers. And this year we got wild mustard as one of the earlier plants to bloom here in the garden. And you see that path is just come free the bronze fennel is sprouting really strongly. I have so much of it. And you have Egyptian onions that also need to be thin. Essentially, I use them to make vegetable broth and comfrey everywhere. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to come back and I will be harvesting most of that comfrey and digging out some roots to bring them to my new home site, the homestead site. At this point in the garden, the garlic really is the highlight. I've been growing garlic on this particular site for about four or five years. Year after year, we really have an amazing harvest. This is one of the um, crops that I do believe it benefits from the not wheat composting that we do uh, because it's just so vigorous. It, it loves, loves, loves compost. And I pile the beds with compost at the end of the year and plant the garlic close and it just grows with a lot of vitality. I probably fertilize it a couple of times. I either do a compost tea or I um, dilute seawater. Essentially it's one part of seawater per 100 parts of fresh water. And I do that once or twice throughout the growing season until once, it start, once, once I start to see that the lower leaves start to yellow, I stop watering altogether. The garlic is a wonderful crop. Um, it's one crop that grows in the winter when nothing else is growing. It's a crop that you can plant, and especially if you're mulching, like you see here, the beds are heavily mulched with leaves. You can literally just walk away because you're not going to get a lot of pressure from weeds. And that's a theme for this garden. This, this particular site, we've been working here for about five years. This is a garden that doesn't require watering doesn't require a ton of weeding, especially in the garden beds. I do most of the weeding around the garden because a lot of the Japanese no wheat is just really eager to come in and enjoy that really rich soil that we've been able to build. But the garden as a whole doesn't require a lot of maintenance, doesn't require 
uh, constant watering. I probably come to this side maybe every three weeks, uh, sometimes a month, and it looks wonderful. I mean, this morning it took me about an hour to do all the weeding. You can see some of the weeds here in the middle, and within an hour the garden looks just like someone has been here um, at least once a week. So definitely applying those permaculture principles you can create. There was a lot of work at the beginning to get the mulch and everything going, but once it's up and running, it's just really wonderful and you get to enjoy uh, the garden. At this point, this garden really is about enjoyment, about coming here, spending time in the garden and finding things to do.